When you think about chess, it teaches you to interrogate the idea, like to bring this rigorous assessment. So, you know, if you're not looking for checks and captures, you know, like you said, a killer idea, it's over. I believe you think of chess as a force for good, and so do I. Um, but I think you believe it extends beyond the chessboard to life and, and, and business, and that, you know, critical reasoning, the ability to make better decisions, delaying gratification, I could go on. Because yes. as a young kid, I figured some of those points out for myself. And when I teach my course, I refer back to chess analysis in the hope, even if they can't play, that they understand. I have a great competitor assessment one that the opposition is your competitors. And if you, you, know, if you move the same piece twice, you're, 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 forget the word losing tempo, you're losing time and, these, and people are attacking you. Mm -hmm. And then we take that down a journey. I've heard you say a couple of things, um, but if it's okay with you, I'd love to ask um, kind of what, what do you think your, your big three uh, your lessons are, if, whether you play chess or not, that you could get from chess. So how do you convince kids and adults that, that haven't jumped in or my other two kids that don't want to play that they can see value beyond the game itself? You know, it's interesting because uh, my job is not really to convince. It's, it's to guide. Yeah. Right. Sure. Uh, so I am never trying to sell. I'm always trying to sell, but I'm never trying to sell hard. Right. Sure. I, I start first and foremost with the centrality of my passion for the game and how it's helped me, how it's transformed me, how it's taken me from being a poor kid in Jamaica who just wanted to live with his mom who was living in the States and it's been 10 years away from us. Uh, to, to, to get her papers together, to finally get our papers together, to then bring me, my brother and sister to the States uh, when I was 12. And then when I was 14, falling in love with chess and only wanting to do chess all the time, every day. And, and my mom thinking, what are you doing? I had spent <laughs> all those years away from you so that you can become a, a you know proper professional, which she saw as doctor, lawyer, accountant, yeah, traditional. Sure. Yeah. And and yet I got to I get to have the job I wanted, which I didn't know how it was going to work out, but it ended up working out in this amazing way where now I travel the world, uh, going to elite chess tournaments, doing commentary, the best players on the planet, yeah. where I can be a super fan, an Uber fan and, right. and and live my love. Yeah, it's incredible. So chess sales itself, first, not because of chess, but because of my passion for it, that you can do something as offbeat, off-center as chess. And if you can do it with chess, you can do it with any of your passions that you have, which is my pitch to my kids, that they can say, look, dad did his thing. So if I want to be an artist, he's 100% behind me because what can he say? He's a chess player. <laughs> I want to be a filmmaker. He's got, he can't say anything because he's a chess player and, yeah. and, you know, and they know I love and support them. So that's, that's the first, the, the beauty of being able to pursue what you love. The other thing is about chess that's for me, I mean, there are multiple takeaways, as you mentioned, but for me, uh, there are huge ones. One is the, 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 the necessity to listen to another person's ideas the absolute necessity, right? If you play chess and you don't pay attention to what the other person is doing, that's a recipe for complete disaster. You're gonna lose, no checkmate point. is on the way. And you can, you, know, you, can respect, you can have the most brilliant ideas, the most brilliant ideas. If you don't execute, if you don't see the idea and if you don't execute it, okay, too bad. But if your opponent has a killer idea, they're gonna to try to crush you on the next move and you don't see it, it's not too bad, it's over, you're gone, you're dead on the spot. So the need to respect other people's ideas even more so than your own ideas, to listen attentively, which is something that we have a huge deficit of right now I mean, oh, in the sure. States for sure. But I mean, well, you know, it's, it's like an epidemic really of of ignoring others, of just all being all about self and the centrality of our own ideas. We're the middle of, 
we're the center of the universe, everyone else is on the periphery, and we let their ideas come in as we wish, instead of recognizing uh, that other people have tremendous ideas and you need to listen very carefully. Even when they're wrong, you have to listen to their motivation, to why it is that they're saying what they're saying. And the power that gives you to live your life, to manage your business, your personal life, your friendships, your, all, all of it, is through being a very careful listener to other people's wants, needs, ideas, plans, desires for themselves. Because, I mean, what is, what is, what is business except solving other people's problems, right? Yeah, yeah, for the, for the most part, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, 75% of it becomes about the third party, right? I'd argue there's some things in the, in the in your practices that you have to, you're alone in the, as a founder, you've got to figure out. And I think the critical reasoning that can come from, and particularly trade-off analysis, um, you get from chess. You, you mentioned something that was so powerful and we often don't talk about it. And that's that you're talking about people, but there's also the voiceless right mm -hmm. you know, the animals the environment mm -hmm. right no one's listening because they because it can't talk but right. we don't we don't look at this and therefore we're destroying our planet now i'm not going to give you an eco i'm not i'm, you know, I'm not sitting here although i'm passionate about i'm with it. you i'm with you yeah. I, i'm very i'm very much into that myself I, it's we a can, tragedy we can train ourselves to say we got to look at it. and the other one you said that was interesting around this idea that you know you have to listen but when you think about chess it teaches you to interrogate the idea like to bring this rigorous assessment. So, you know, if you're not looking for checks and captures, you know, like you said, a killer idea, it's over. And a lot like business, um, maybe relationships are a bit different, but certainly business. If you go, if you don't interrogate the idea, you don't go and look at the competitive landscape and you just launch something because you don't want to you know, do the critical reasoning or research, it can be over. It may be delayed, but it could be over. And it's important in chess, you know, they talk about very few proficient few professions that try to refute their own hypotheses right very few legal profession is one of them right yeah you you don't go in saying my idea is brilliant nobody's going to punch a hole in it we go in saying my idea might make a lot of sense but no matter what the opposition is going to come at this idea all guns blazing and try to blow it up and if there is a gigantic hole i should know before they know so you can't go in except as a skeptic of your own concepts. We fall in love with our own ideas. That's just human nature. These ideas are so brilliant. And then we wait for the other person to, to, to give feedback that we hope is not deep slashing criticism. But you have to embrace the critic. The, the critic helps you to grow. The critic makes your ideas oh, stronger. Yeah. It, it, yeah. you know, it, it, um, it, fireproofs your idea that's what you want you can throw all the after they throw all the bombs at it and you go look i'm still here smiling it works if you're not open to that you've got nothing because yeah, I'm with because you. your ideas are going to crumble constantly around you and they're going to they're going to show you where there's a brilliant idea we have to do this in chess right i have this great idea about what i want to do but there's something that's not quite working so how do i fix it what do I need to calculate? How do I, do I need to switch the move order, invert the move order? Now it works perfectly. What do I need to do in order to make my great idea actually become concrete in a variation? And so, you know, and that's that kind of backward analysis, if you will, you see the future, but you need to get back to where you are. How do you do that, right? So you're going forward and backwards constantly. Chess teaches you that if you don't, if you don't, then, you know, why well, am I in your room with you? Because you're just, going to say brilliant 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 i'm great i'm great i'm great and then when it hits the road uh, the rubber hits the road it turns out that it's flawed and so to truly be a, a, a proper skeptic of one's own ideas very difficult i'm not going to even say i perfected it because we're all egotists in the end but chess teaches that profoundly to really look as you say interrogate your own ideas